Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. Uh, this November, which is uh, in less than a month, we go in, uh, to the polls to elect our new president. And there's also uh, three uh, marijuana initiatives that are on the ballot in the states of Washington, Colorado, and Oregon. Uh, the, all three of these are, are basically trying to stress that the uh, drug war and the, the law enforcement, all the efforts and stuff and the amount of money that they've been spending to try to eradicate cannabis and control it and all has really just been a, not only a waste of revenues but unnecessary. <clears throat> so these initiatives are sort of making an attempt to address uh, these very things that uh, most people out there are getting arrested for and all. And in Colorado, they, uh, their plan to regulate it like alcohol uh, allows a person to possess, if you're 21 years old, you can possess uh, up to an ounce without any kind of criminal uh, uh, sentence or arrest or anything like that. And you're also allowed to uh, grow six plants in a locked area in your own private home and all. And uh, so this is certainly better than uh, what they have right now, for sure. Although I, th I do believe that, uh, that it could go a lot further. But, you know, we, we've been oppressed with these laws and stuff for so long. You know, we're going on almost seven and a half decades of, of uh, oppression from the government, the Marijuana Tax Act, and the, and the other stuff th that followed since. And so I can understand these steps being, a, you know, kind of a breakthrough and all. But... The regular, there are some things I question, though, about this, though, how they're going to regulate it like alcohol. Alcohol is not taxed uh, 25 percent, and the bulk of their revenues on, on what is taxed on alcohol doesn't go right into the general fund like a lot of people would believe. But I think that doing it like alcohol is a real good idea, but I think there needs to be a little bit closer comparison, particularly on the sales tax angle, and also, too, we don't tell when people go to a liquor store, we don't tell them they can only buy six six packs of beer or six bottles of whiskey or anything like that. So I think, you know, it is an attempt, like I said, to do better than what's out there, but it's a far cry from regulating, you know, like alcohol. Uh, the the best way to turn over the revenues is, is with the hemp industry and the generation of the sales tax from that. And now Oregon's proposal uh, actually stresses this the, the one of the things they're stressing is bringing the hemp industry back and this is what's been missing the cannabis market in the united states even if every person in this country smoked an ounce of cannabis every day could be grown on a very small amount of land this is not where the revenues are going to be and here we are we're we're proposing all these initiatives all, but we're keeping the price of the cannabis and the taxation and all these projected revenues, we're projecting off this current illegal market price. And this is wrong. I mean, if, if you were going to say, okay, if we're going to base all these revenues on what cannabis should be selling for, if it were on a legal market, I mean, if you're going to pretend it's legal or pretend it's not legal, but at least what I think where Oregon is taking the lead in, in all of these initiatives is that they're stressing the hemp industry. And this is truly where the golden egg lies. It's not in the sale of the smokable cannabis. Certainly there's going to be revenues from that and all. But as, as these states adopt their own laws and stuff, and, or their own rules and regulations, if you will, the, the cannabis is going to be able to be grown more and more. I mean, it'd be like going into somebody's garden today and saying, okay, you can grow tomato plants in there, but you can only grow 10. Once we start finally waking the public up and realizing that the whole issue of making this plant and this herb illegal in the first place was wrong, and it does become outright legal, then the, the cost of the cannabis that's going to be to the consumer, because they can grow their own for the most part, uh, is going to fall way off the charts. And this, so we shouldn't be projecting all these false revenues from money that really is not going to be there. It's just sort of a, you know, it's like oil prices and gold and all that. Yeah, we can send them up sky high, but it doesn't make it mean that that's what it's going to be worth if, the, if it was turned over to the legal commodity. And that's really what we should be striving for because the most money is stood to be gained if we turn this over to outright legal businesses and stuff. And, and not have heavy taxation, not have heavy regulation. That's basically what they were doing 
trying to make it illegal in 1937 with the Marijuana Tax Act. I mean, it was a it was a way to unfairly tax the hemp farmer versus the other people that were growing products and stuff. And that it, it's we've we've got to get past all that somehow. But like I said, these are baby steps, if you will, in the right direction. At least they're not going the other way and saying that if you have an ounce of marijuana, you're going to prison. I mean, it used to be like that. It used to be even worse than that. So things are gradually changing. Now, in the state of Washington, uh, it's basically the same thing. They're going to try to end the adult marijuana prohibition in 21 and have a heavy taxation, 25, you know, 25 percent of sales tax on the on the sale of the products and a bulk of the revenue is going into the general fund and portions of it going to uh, councils on drug abuse and, and uh, addictive personalities and things like that. And, you know, those, that's a good way, I guess, to fund those type of things. But uh, we really are making, I think, a, a good step forward. But I certainly thought that after 70 years seven and a half decades of what we've been putting up with that we would be much further along that outright legalization it's time for that I mean uh, we all know what happens if we get outright legalization you know we lose the drug cartels we lose all the violence and murders that the drug cartels do to control the marijuana market we lose all of the street gangs in America that are causing a lot of the violence and murders out there in America unnecessarily because we have this turf war going on, who's going to control this or who's going to control that. And now we have a initiatives that are going in place that are keeping this illegal price structure and all the revenues and projections all that are based on this illegal structure. And I, for the life of me, do not understand that. But I know we have to start somewhere. But I think that it's going to be a big mistake for these areas and stuff to project all these revenues and be expecting to get them and then the price of the cannabis market falls off the map and you know those revenues aren't going to be there that's what i see if you went ahead now and made it outright legalization and made the money off the sales tax on the hemp products you'll far exceed any revenues that the sale of the cannabis smoke is going to bring and I thank you for joining the cannabis party, but get out and vote. At least these initiatives are a step in the right direction. They may not be fully answer what we want. They are a step in the right direction. <coughs> At least they won't be arresting people for possession of cannabis, but we need to go a whole lot further. And I thank you for joining the cannabis party.